So you've decided to jump into the world of growing cannabis, but how do you choose between a feminized photoperiod plant or an autoflowering strain? Well, in today's video, we will review the pros and cons of each type of plant so you can make an informed choice as to what best suits your situation. I'm Dr. Judd with Green Cert MD. Let's get into it. So today we're taking a quick look at what exactly an autoflower is and the main differences between photoperiod and autoflowering cannabis to help new growers decide which option fits their needs best. This video is part of our brand new autoflowering grow series and our recently finished photoperiod grow season can be found by clicking here. If you're new here, welcome, we're glad you're here. Be sure to click like, smash that subscribe button and ring the bell so you never miss out on any of our upcoming content. Also, as usual, this video is intended for medical educational purposes only. I am not diagnosing or treating any condition you may have, and please know and comply with all applicable laws wherever you may live. So when we traditionally talk about cannabis, we talk about two main subspecies, sativa and indica. However, that is generally excluding a third subspecies of the cannabis plant, ruderalis. Ruderalis was born in the wild from plants taken into Siberia and the far north, where plants that flowered on the traditional photoperiod light schedule suffered, and as summers were short with 20 plus hours of light and winters were long with only 4 hours of light, a new breed of plant known as Ruderalis developed. Unlike traditional photoperiod plants, Cannabis ruderalis flowers on its own internal clock, regardless of the external light stimuli. This subspecies was largely ignored, save for some governmental experiments with breeding in the US, typically at the University of Mississippi, as well as universities in Canada. However, a particularly enterprising individual, calling himself the Joint Doctor, cracked the autoflowering puzzle with the development of the first commercially available autoflowering cannabis strain, the Low Rider. I actually have some lowrider seeds right here and had the opportunity to meet the joint doctor while I was at Spanibus. I haven't released that video yet because the Spanibus videos haven't really done so well, but I think I will put that interview together for this coming week as he really is a legend in the history of autoflowering cannabis, so stay tuned for that. These initial first-generation autoflowering strains were known for being smaller plants, generally no taller than 30 centimeters, with a mid-level THC content and an average terpene profile. However, the promise of a fast-flowering plant, which doesn't require a change in light cycle, was not lost on the industry, and it has led to several high-quality breeders such as FastBuds, Doctor's Choice, and Royal Queen Seeds putting significant time and research into optimizing the integration of ruderalis characteristics into plants while maintaining the traditional positives of a photoperiod plant. When comparing autoflowers to photoperiods, the greatest difference again is the light cycle. Traditional photoperiod plants require a change in the light cycle from 18 on, 6 off, to 12 on and 12 off to initiate the flowering cycle. Autoflowering plants use internal cues to start flowering automatically without any change in the light cycle. The benefit of this is that the growing cycle for autoflowers is generally much shorter, being ready to harvest in 8 to 12 weeks from germination, not uh, from the flip as per usual for photoperiod plants. So that's about a month shorter than what you would typically see with photoperiod plants. The plants are also generally of shorter stature, allowing more plants to be grown in a confined space, such as a home grower who only has one room or one tent. They also require less maintenance such as pruning and therefore are an excellent option for beginning growers. The disadvantage of an autoflower, of course, comes in terms of yield, which is one of the main drawbacks that breeders such as Fast Buds and Royal Queen Seeds have been actively working to address and one which we are going to be testing with our F1 hybrid autoflowers that we are growing from Royal Queen Seeds this series. Autoflowers also tend to have lower THC content on average, but again, breeders have been actively addressing this, and now there are many strains on the market in the solid mid-20% range, so this has become less of an issue. Finally, autoflowers are unable to be cloned because, as we mentioned in our photoperiod flower series, the clones are technically the same age as the mother plant, which for an autoflower means that you're likely to end up with a flowering stem in a solo cup. 
So to recap, auto flowers tend to have a shorter overall grow time, lower total yield, and lower THC content than the average photo period plant, but they are easier to grow for new growers, especially uh, with their quick turnaround and their more compact growing footprint than what is needed for photo period plants. I find that autoflowers are great for a few types of growers. Those who are space constrained, such as someone who uh, lives in an apartment or only has one 4x4 tent in which to flower and veg, uh, this is a great option because the smaller, more compact plants are easier to handle in those environments. Growers who also like a fast turnaround and let's say just grow one or two plants at a time for personal use, they'll enjoy the average 60 days less growing period compared to photos. And finally, people who like to have a significant variety and always change strains with every cycle will love the extensive variety now showing up on the market for auto flowers. Photo periods are best for people who have more space, are not limited on time for turnaround, and who want to maximize their yield and THC content, or those who have one favorite strain which they want to perpetuate indefinitely through cloning. Either way, you really can't go wrong, as at the end of the day, you'll still have some amazing product that far beats the average bud out there on the market because you grew it, you know what went into it, and you put the time, effort, and attention to detail to maximize that plant's potential. So there you go, a quick overview of what an autoflower is and how it fits into the pantheon of cannabis. I will have that interview with the joint doctor out next week, followed by our germination video. I also wanted to say thanks to our great YouTube family and all the people who mentioned in the comments uh, some great autoflower breeders, some of which I was familiar with, such as Fast Buds, and others which I will definitely have to check out and get set up for a review. If you have a favorite breeder or ideas for future videos, drop them in the comments section below, and if you found this video helpful, please share it and subscribe. So that's it for now, and until I see you again, puff puff and pass it on. The clones are technically the same age as the mother plant, or an auto flower. Blah blah flowering fling. The 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 auto flowering fling.